Hi everyone, welcome to the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name is Steve Reeves and I'll be your host tonight. And we've got two great guests. We have CJ Shirk and Ken Reich, both from Autodesk. And we're going to be taking a look at AutoCAD Designer. Brand new add-on for AutoCAD Release 12 for DOS. We're going to be taking a look at all kinds of great graphics, so make sure you watch the whole show. It's a one-hour live call-in show, 861-6283. And we'll be taking all kinds of questions and answers and all kinds of great fun stuff to look at. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Your first time as a Junior Achievement Elementary School volunteer can be a little scary. Can you get kids that young to think about their futures? Call us about volunteering and you'll see. We'll supply you with training for this new program, and the kids will supply plenty of motivation. dances with the waters, which brings the rain that feeds the land, that is home to the animals. All life dances together. In a world so connected, choosing one environmental cause can be hard. EarthShare is 40 environmental charities working together. You and your company can help by calling 1-800-MY-SHARE. All life lives or doesn't together. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name's Steve Reeves, as it says there on the screen. And I'll be your host tonight, and we've got two great guests, uh, CJ Shirk and Ken Reich. But before we get into that, I'm gonna go over a few things of what the next couple of weeks' shows are. Uh, next week, March 21st, by the way, today is Monday, March 14th. This is a live show, and you can call in. But next week's show is, uh, is it March 21st? Is that next? Yeah, next week. Next Monday's March 21st will be a Windows Help Show. Week after that, March 28th, will be Modem Games. Harvey will be doing that show with, uh, we're going to be actually doing live on the, on the air, playing games between modems and things. And again, the phone number is 861-6283, but I want to warn anybody that, that we're going to call in, that's going to call in now. We're going to try to go th as far as we can the first 20 minutes and show as much as we can before we take any phone calls. So if you want to call in, you may be on hold for a while. But after the first 20 minutes, we'll start taking and answering questions because we've got a lot of things to cover. Uh, and also, oh, 861-6283 is the phone number, 861-6283, write that down. And our hotline, uh, we haven't mentioned the hotline in the last couple of shows. I don't know if somebody forgot the number or what, but it's 587-5369, uh, 587-5369. There'll be a little slide at the end of the show that'll actually t you know, bring that up so you can leave messages, comments, uh, no criticism, just comments, good comments, actually. Um, what you'd like to see in future shows, what you, you, know, what you like about the show, whatever you want to do. That's numbers uh, 5875369. So I guess without further ado, we ought to introduce our two guests. Our first guest is CJ Shirk uh, com from Commercial Sales at Autodesk. And to his right, I guess, or my, his left, my right, is uh, Ken Reich, uh, application engineer from Autodesk. Um, CJ, why don't you tell us a little bit about Autodesk? Uh, sure. I'll give you Steve, 20 seconds. No, I'm just kidding. 20 seconds? A couple of minutes. I Go can ahead. do that. As you know, Steve, uh, back in the early 80s is when Autodesk got their start in computer-aided design. At that time, if someone wanted to do computer-aided drafting or computer-aided design, they had to use a mainframe or mini-computer-based system, which often costs fifty dollars to $100,000 and up per seat. Uh, Autodesk came along with a PC-based package for $2,000 that had about 80% of the functionality of the high-end packages, uh, but at a fraction of the price, about $2,000 or so. Uh, today, Autodesk is now the number one CAD CAM vendor uh, in North America with revenues of about $400 million. Uh, and what's very exciting for Autodesk today is probably the most significant thing that Autodesk has come out with since AutoCAD itself is Designer, 
which promises to do the same thing for 3D CAD that we did for 2D CAD back in the early 80s. Hmm. That is a feature-based parametric solid modeling system for the masses. Today, you'd have to spend twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 per seat to have this type of functionality that now we've packed onto a PC for $1,500. Right, it used to be, had to be, almost be run on a Unix base. Oh, yeah, Unix absolutely. The, the current high-end systems that are out there and very popular today require big investment hardware, software, training, huge learning curves. Uh, and what we've tried to do is provide a lot of the functionality that people are really use in those systems for a fraction of the price. Right. And that's really the Autodesk model, and, and that's what we're doing now with Designer. And that's what we're going to be showing today. Right. And, and Ken's going to be showing it today. Uh, Ken, right. why don't you, we're going to go in, before we go into the demo, why don't you tell us just a little blurb, that's a technical term there, a okay. little blurb about what exactly we're running this on. We're going to be running this on a, a regular 4666 PC. We do have a, a Matrox graphics card, which will allow us to uh, rotate a, a 3D dynamic image uh, with, a, with grow shading. And that's what we'll be using. Oh, okay. So I guess what we got to do is go right into, let's go start the demo, just kind of go right into, is that what you want to? Yeah, that's fine. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. I think we want, you want to say something? Oh, sure. This uh, first image here was done with the AutoVision package, which is the new high-end ray tracing package for visualization, much the same uh, that we've got in our 3D Studio package, which is for animations. This is just for stills, but it produces a very, very nice image. Uh, yeah, I always tell people, price. AutoVision is sort of like a non-animated version of 3D Studio. Right, that really exactly going? right. Yeah, because exactly. it does all the photorealistic rendering and everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is I the part... I won't interrupt you anymore. That's fine. <laughs> this is the part we're going to model for you today. It's a hanger bracket, and we're going to begin with the upper lug area here. It's going to be our base feature. We'll uh, make that. Next, mm -hmm. we'll uh, place the transition piece right here, followed by the strengthening web in back. And once we have those features generated, we'll uh, begin our, our documentation. We're going to place four views, and we're going to show you the true bidirectional associativity that AutoCAD Designer has. We're going to be making changes to the model and making sure that all views in the drawing are updated to reflect these changes. Next, we'll be making changes in the drawing and make sure that the model reflects these changes as well. I think you'll agree, as a freebie, we're going to be generating this documentation, as you can see. We'll be making changes and make sure the model reflects these changes. Let's get started. I'd like to point out that I, I do not have any geometry in this drawing file. Everything I'm going to be uh, generating today is live. I do have a few saved viewports, but that's it. We're going to begin with a circle right in the middle of the screen. We aren't uh, very concerned with what, what the size is. We're going to assign some intelligence to that circle. We're going to generate a profile. And like anything else within AutoCAD, we have everything that's user-definable. Let's go into settings, and I'd like to point out a few things. We have an angular tolerance here set at 4 degrees, and I'm going to point out the ramifications of the setting in a few minutes. We also have the ability to change the size of the pick box. Here we'll uh, increase its size a little bit. <clears throat> now I'd like to set up a dimensional relationship. I'm going to add a dimension. Place it right here. I'd like to make sure that this circle is five units in diameter. Notice the uh, circle reflect that relationship. So you actually, by typing five in, change the radius of that exactly. Or diameter. Either exactly. Exactly. It uh, reflected the uh, dimensional relationship that I assigned. That's what we mean by parametric. Parametric, right? Next, we'll go into two views, and I'd like to create my first feature. First feature. All right. This will be an extrusion. <laughs> okay, and. Within AutoCAD Designer, uh, everything is <clears throat> driven by, by dialog boxes. That makes it real simple. Exactly, yeah. Very easy to, uh, to pick up for, for the end user, whether or not he's uh, familiar with AutoCAD. Now here notice we only have one, one operational choice, and this is going to be a base feature. Okay, we can do this blind or from a midplane, and watch the graphics reflect my selection. Here we'll uh, pick blind, and let me put in a distance of 7.5. So you don't even know how to read, and you can still use this, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's important, too. Now, we've just created our, our first feature. This is our base feature, our upper lug. I'd like to uh, make a work sketch, uh, a sketch plane, so that my subsequent geometry that I add will be placed on this plane. So here, all I have to do is <coughs> put a work axis on the cylinder. Next, I'm going to place a um, work plane on that axis, and this is going to be planar normal to the current UCS. 
So by selecting the work axes, I now have a sketch plane. All subsequent geometry added to our model will be placed on this sketch plane until I define a new sketch plane. So it's like a piece of paper in the middle you're drawing on in the middle of that cylinder. Exactly. Good point. Let's go back into a work view. Now I can utilize very familiar AutoCAD commands. This is going to be a 2D polyline command. And I'm going to sketch in a very rough sketch of the transition piece. Notice I'm not concerned whatsoever with the size, whether or not uh, the lines are orthogonal. I'm just going to throw in a, a rough sketch. One thing that you did mention, and I want to mention that and make sure everybody knows, this is AutoCAD. That's right. This it's is inside an, AutoCAD. This is an ADS application running within AutoCAD. So anyone that has AutoCAD can just add this to their existing AutoCAD release 12. Yes, if they have AutoCAD R12 C2, they can add, uh, right. add this to their, to their station. It's just a new pull-down menu. Sure, and, and here, that's a good point. Here's, uh, here is the new pull-down menu that ha offers all of the functionality for, for Designer. Once again, we're going to generate a profile from this sketch. Okay. Notice that the lines were automatically leveled for us, and that reverts back to the setting we had, the four degree, the four angular setting. If any line was drawn within four degrees from horizontal or vertical, the line was automatically leveled. Designer also made some assumptions here with tangencies. Notice we have tangencies within the arcs, and um, I got a little sloppy with this area right here, so let's force that, uh, that arc to be tangent with that horizontal line, and this can be done very easily with a geometric constraint. And we'll add that. And we'll type in T for tangent. And we'll force a tangency situation right there. Next, we're going to add in a few, a few more uh, dimensional relationships. We want to make sure that this distance right here is 1.3. Watch the geometry shift over to reflect that uh, relationship. Let's add in another. OK, this will be a distance of 6.5, and again, the geometry shifts over. Now notice... You are, you are typing that in the bottom in case they can't see that in the command line. You type 6.5 from the keyboard. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Sorry. Yeah, we, we utilize, um, for the most part, dialog boxes, but we do enter in some relationships right. down at the command line. Now with AutoCAD Designer, we have the luxury of not being required to fully constrain the system. Here we have a profile, and if we do want to fully constrain it, we're, mm -hmm. we're told two places. We're told in the highlighted geometry, as well as on the bottom at the command line, if you do want to fully constrain it, we're re we are required to have four more dimensional or uh, geometric constraints. So it does have intelligence. Then. Oh, yes. Here we're going to add a vertical dimension. And this, again, will be 6.5 units. And now let's make sure that the top of the transition piece remains at the center of the base feature. So we'll enter in a zero, OK? Uh, notice we have uh, highlighted areas right here. So we'll add a few more relationships. This will be a radius of 2. And let's place this down here with a radius of 3. Now we're also told down at the bottom that we have a, a fully constrained sketch if we, if we care to do so. Once again, if you're, if you're utilizing existing 2D geometry and you have a, a rather complex profile, you do not have to fully constrain it. You can uh, add in a few pertinent dimensions and then create your feature. A lot of, um, it's very handy. A lot of systems uh, require you to fully constrain it, which really can chew up a lot of time when you're right. modeling. We're going to go back into a single ISO view. We're going to add this to our model. Once again, we're going to do an extrusion. Notice this time I no longer have the option to select bases in operation. We've already created our base feature, but I can do a join an intersection or a cut and watch the graphics reflect my selection. Again, this really uh, decreases the learning curve because people are made aware within our graphics of what they're about to do. We're going to do a join and in this situation we're going to do a mid-plane. We could also do it, do an extrusion to an existing plane out there in, in space. For this situation we'll do a mid-plane and let's give it a distance of five. And as you can see, we just added this to our model. Hmm. We're going to go back into a work view. And again, we're going to utilize the polyline command. We're going to sketch in a rough outline of so what our... So you're drawing on that piece of paper again. That, we're still on you know. the active sketch plane. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. We're going to generate a rough outline That's of our I'm design... Host. That's why I'm host. <laughs> of our, <laughs> good point. Of our design intent for our strengthening web. Okay, and notice you can be... Uh, quite sloppy when you sketch stuff in here. And I don't have to uh, worry about whether or not 
it's completely closed. Let's once again add some intelligence. We're going to create a profile. Hmm. Notice that this line that uh, looked rather off angle was automatically <coughs> leveled for us, as well as the other lines. Now, once again, we're going to add some uh, relationships. These are going to be geometric constraints, and I'm going to utilize the collinear relationship. We have a lot of other relationships we can define. We can force a line to be horizontal, vertical, uh, perpendicular or parallel to an existing line. We're going to show you collinear and concentric relationships as well as projection and join. For everybody watching, there will be a test at the end of the show on all these terms. <laughs> Let's right. type in CL for collinear, and I'd like to make sure that the front portion of this strengthening web adheres to the back part of the transition piece. And as we can see, it was shifted over. There's a collinear relationship to find. Mm. I'm going to add three more of these. One right here. In this area. We'll place one right here. And let me zoom in here just a little, a little closer. I'm going to add another one in between this area as well. So now everything lines up. Exactly. Yeah. Now let me go back and add a few more. These will be collinear as well. I'm going to make sure that uh, this piece over here always remains collinear with this, with this section. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'd also like to define a few more dimensional relationships. Here we're going to add a dimension. We'd like to make sure that this radius is 3 inches. We're going to give this a length of 3.8. And again, watch the uh, geometry re reflect our dimensional relationship, as well as, notice we have uh, some highlighted geometry to uh, reflect the area that needs to be addressed if we want to fully constrain it. So we're going to put in a relationship, again, a radial relationship down here of 6.5. And let's make sure that the back part of this strengthening web adheres to the back part of the base feature. Okay. Again, we have a fully constrained sketch, and we're going to go back into an isometric view. Let's add this to our model. Again, it's going to be an extrusion, and this would just be a, a very thin strengthening web, so we'll enter in a distance of 1. And I'd also like to po point out that these, uh, these settings are modal. They will stay at the, uh, at the previous setting. Modal? Modal. It's a modal setting. Technical yeah. term there? There you go. More buzzwords. Once I thought it was like <coughs> Elmick first. And, didn't see <laughs> a modal? That's a model. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. You get goofed up. You can have a drink of water. Modal. Go ahead and drink the water there. Thank you. Okay. Super modal. Okay. Here, once again, we've added that to our model. And we now have, again, a solid model. Because we're using ACES, as the solid underpinnings, we have at our disposal the ability to generate instant mass properties. And here we can check out our center of gravity, our principal axes, and moments of inertia, and so forth. And let's key in a different density. And we can watch our, our mass instantly update. And this is included in the designer package? Yes, it is. Properties. Yes, everything I'm going to show you here today is included with the, uh, right. with the base designer package. And this package. is a solid modeling package? This is a, an, an ACES-based solid mo modeling package, right. yes. Let's show you how easy it is to, uh, to make some changes. Let's, let's say I made a mistake and we'd like to, to edit a feature. I'm going to grab onto this transition piece and let's make a change. I'm going to change the 6.5 horizontal distance and we'll make it a 12. Now all we have to do is do a quick update. And notice that not only did the transition piece stretch out, but the strengthening web was pulled out as well. This is because we had a collinear relationship defined. Now that we've done that, I would like to generate some, uh, some documentation. We'll go in here and create our first view. This is going to be a base view. And I'm going to accept all the defaults here. We'll, we'll bring it in on a scale of uh, 1 to 1. And this is going to be an orthogonal projection, OK? And we're going to project, project this based on this current work plane. We'll accept that. And let's bring it in and place it where we want it. When I press Return, our pertinent dimensions for this view are brought in, as well as hidden lines are automatically generated for us. Hmm. So it's making a sheet of all these different details and views. It sure is. Yeah. We're going to place a few more views. Uh, this next one will be 
an orthogonal view, in essence, we're going to be folding a view from this parent view. And because I'm placing it up above, we're going to generate a plan view with hidden line removal. Hmm. Let's place in a side view. We'll go with the defaults. Now we have a side view. OK. And next, I'd like to uh, generate an isometric view based on the, the elevation view. So here we'll select ISO. And let's bring it in at a different scale. We'll bring it in at uh, 1.5 to 1. So it'll come in a little bit bigger than normal. There you go. And you can rubber band it around until you're happy with the placement. And for those folks familiar with the, with the hide command of old, watch how quickly this generates hidden lines for an isometric view. Mm. Let's zoom back in around this area. And I'd like to show you the true bidirectional associativity that AutoCAD Designer has. Here we're going to make changes while we're in the drawing and make sure the model reflects those changes. Once again, we're going to change a few dimensions. Let's change this 12 and make it a 10. We can also change this vertical distance of 6.5. We'll make a drastic change. We'll change it to 12. Now that we've done that, we're going to zoom back out and let's do an update. This update will ensure that <coughs> the model will always reflect the current status of the drawing and vice versa. The drawing and all the views in the drawing will always reflect the current status of the model. And we're done. We've, we've made all our changes in every single view. Let's go back into our model. Got, you can keep going. They told me at two minutes, but keep going as long as you want here. OK. Whenever you want me to break. OK, go ahead. Keep going. Keep modeling here. OK. <laughs> Will do. We're going to go back into the part and add, add a few more features. At any time, we can turn off the work, uh, work plane display. And we'll do that. Let's go back into a an elevation view of this, of this part. And let's add a few more features. We're just going to throw in a circle right here. Again, we aren't concerned with uh, the size or its placement. And we're going to generate another profile, add some intelligence to this. Once we've done that, I'd like to show you how we can change our dimensioning display. Instead of being numeric, we're going to change this to show the equations as well. Now let's. Uh, generate a, a dimensional relationship and make sure that the diameter of this circle is 7.6. Notice AutoCAD Designer designated this variable as D17. And I want to show you how we can utilize that variable. We're going to generate a vertical dimension right here. And we're going to utilize D17. Let's divide it by 4. It's going to place that circle right in the midpoint of that uh, transition piece. Watch it shift it over, and it called that variable D18. OK. Another geometric constraint I would like to show you is the ability to project an entity onto an existing feature. Here we're going to type in PR for project. And once again, the AutoCAD user can utilize his very familiar OSNAP commands. We're going to generate, we're going to pick the center point of the circle, and we're going to project it down onto the midpoint, the end of that feature. Notice how it shifted over. Whatever we do to this transition piece, that lower lug will always remain centered on that, on that feature. Hmm. We'll go in here and quickly turn back our uh, dim, dim display to numeric. We're going to go into an ISO view, and let's add this once again to our model. It's going to be a, an extrusion. And in this situation, I'd like to show you something new. We're going to give it a draft angle. Let's give it a draft angle of negative 7, we'll enter in a distance of 6.5. And I'm going to join this to the model. But I'm also going to uh, join it and, and do my apply my draft angle at the midplane. And you can see the results of this, uh, of this function. We have a, <coughs> a draft angle of ne negative 7 applied at the midpoint. We've got about a minute till the break. So if you want to keep going just oh. for about another minute, kind of right. whatever you want to go next. Sounds good. I don't want to stop you. All righty, I'm on a roll. <laughs> Let's go, let's go up here. <laughs> let's go up here, and we're going to add our tab. So I have a predefined uh, view for that tab. Pan down just a little. And again, I'm going to utilize the uh, polyline command. Let's put in a, a rough sketch of the tab. Again, AutoCAD commands, right? There you go. Right, that's important because it really makes the learning curve a lot lower for a lot of people who already know AutoCAD. Right. He can talk? I didn't realize okay. he could yeah, talk. Yeah, I can talk. Yeah, he does say something once in a while. <laughs> 
it, now we've just created uh, our profile, and notice once again, we've had, uh, we're told how many dimensions and constraints we need if we want to fully constrain this model. I think we're going to take a quick break here. Okay. Um, everybody ready to take a break? Okay. Uh, in case, you, <laughs> you're going to take a quick break, about two minutes. Uh, we'll start taking your calls in the next session, 861-6283, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Here's one time it doesn't matter who your neighbor is. Here's the other. Life's too short. Stop the hate. driving doesn't just kill drunk drivers. Next time your friend insists on driving drunk, do whatever it takes to stop him. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. Kind of caught me off guard there. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show. Again, my name's Steve Reeves. Everybody seems to know that already. Keeps flashing on the screen there. 861-6283 uh, is the phone number. We have two guests tonight from Autodesk, CJ Shirk and Ken Reich, both from Autodesk in Dallas. And uh, we're taking, uh, taking a look at AutoCAD Designer. We're gonna, she still has a little bit further to go on the demo. So, um, we're not going to take, well, we'll take, start, we'll take phone calls, 861-6283, but we're probably not going to take anybody on the air for about 10 more minutes. So if you want to call in and get logged in, 861-6283, take it away, Ken. All righty. When we left off, we had just uh, created a profile from our, uh, our 2D polyline, and we're going to begin uh, assigning some dimensional relationships. We're going to add a few dimensions here. Let's make sure that this uh, radius is 1.5 units. And we're going to give it a horizontal distance right here of 3.8. Notice the geometry will shift over to, re to reflect that uh, dimensional relationship. Let's give it a vertical distance right here of, say, four units. And notice once again that we're told down at the bottom, if you, if you do want to fully constrain your st sketch, you need one more dimension. And we're, we're told which area needs to be addressed right here in the highlighted area. Let's define a geometric constraint for that area. And once again, it'll be a, a collinear relationship. We're going to make sure that the bottom portion of this tab remains collinear with the top portion of that transition piece. And it was stretched down to reflect that. Go back into an isometric view. Let's add this to our model. Once again, we're going to be uh, creating an extruded feature. And we'll uh, give it zero draft. It'll, it'll be a, a thin tab, so we'll put in a distance of 2.2. And we'll add this to our model. Hmm. Okay. We've been showing you quite a bit of extrusions. Let's cover some uh, additional features that we have avail available that, that come with uh, AutoCAD Designer. We have the ability to revolve a profile around an existing feature or an axis uh, it, for, for folks that make a lot of turn parts. We also have the ability to, to create a swept feature, which is to, to run a profile through an existing path, a, a, a planar path, like for an oil passage, and, passage and whatnot. We also are going to show you uh, 
the ability to create rather complex fillets as well as chamfers. Right now, let's show you uh, how we can create holes. Here, once again, we have a, a very intuitive dialog box and our graphics will reflect our, our selection between a drilled operation, a counter bore, and a counter sink. So for folks that uh, get a little confused with counter bore and counter sunk, we're, we're made aware of what we're about to create. For this operation, we'll uh, create a drilled hole and we're gonna place it concentric to an existing feature. We could also place it along two edges or on a predefined point. Let's make sure that this, this drilled hole goes all the way through the feature that we're gonna select. We'll put in a diameter of 1.3. And notice all we have to do is simply select on the existing feature. We now have a through hole. That through hole has intelligence. Whatever we do to this, to this tab, that will always remain a, a through hole. And let me prove that to you. We're gonna edit feature, and let's edit this tab. When I extruded it, I gave it a distance of 2.2. Well, let's change that to 2.75. Now that we've done that, Let's do a quick update. And we're gonna notice that not only was the tab extended, but we still have a through hole. That's a feature, an intelligent feature. No matter what we do to that tab, it'll always remain a through hole. Let's place a couple more through holes. One in the upper lug. This will be a diameter of 3.5. We'll place it right here. And we'll place one more in the lower lug. And this will be a diameter of, of five. And notice once again, you can utilize your uh, transparent zoom commands. Normal AutoCAD. Normal AutoCAD functionality. We're in the middle of a, of a feature creation and we can uh, zoom back down to this area. So now we have a through hole in the lower lug as well. Hmm. Did we mention this regular AutoCAD? Yeah, okay. about 65 times. I don't know what the record is, but you're supposed to mention as many times as possible. That's right. We've made quite a few substantial changes to our model. Let's go back into the drawing and make sure that the drawing and all views in the drawing reflect our substantial changes. We're gonna add in our lower lug, our tab, as well as all of our through holes throughout the part. And, and notice every single, every single view within the part will be updated to reflect our changes. And it's done. We've, we've generated all the new hidden lines and uh, we're, we're, we can rest assured that our documentation reflects the current status of our model. That's a vital point because in, in many traditional CAD systems, your model didn't necessarily sync with your drawing. There often were ma mistakes made between the model and the drawing. Right. In this case, it can never be wrong. It's always linked to each other, uh, which improves accuracy greatly and right. productivity. We also have a lot of uh, flexibility in documentation cleanup that will benefit the AutoCAD user. Here we're going to show you how we can freeze a few dimensions that we uh, don't want on our drawing. We'll get rid of a few of these. We have a redundant three in here that we can get rid of. We can also easily move dimensions around. Let's pull this 10 down here a little bit. Okay, we can also uh, move this 12 over to here. So we can see how easy you can, uh, you can, doc you can clean up your, your documentation. Zoom back out here, and we notice we're, we're rather cluttered up here in this tab area. Let's create a, a detailed view of that area. I'm gonna create a view, and this will be a detailed view. Let's give it a scale of two to one. All we have to do is select the middle of our geometry and then do a quick window around the geometry that we'd, we would like included in our detailed view, place it in the area of the drawing that we would like it, press return, we have a detailed view of two to one, and hidden lines are automatically generated for us. It would it'd be really nice to uh, have the pertinent dimensions for that view move from this view to that. Well, we have it covered. Let's go in here and move those views. They thought of everything, right? They, did, they really did. Okay, we're gonna move all these views that are associated with this detailed view. Bring over this four and we're all set. We have all the dimensions we needed to be included in that, uh, in that detail. Let's create another view, and this, this view is going to incorporate a section view. I'm going to generate uh, a hatch pattern for our section as well. So again, we're going to create a view, and this view will be an orthogonal view, and we will uh, create a full section. Let's uh, designate using a hatch pattern, and we can easily pick out a pattern. 
and these are normal patterns that come with AutoCAD R12. We'll go with ANSI 37. Let's put in a scale of 4 to 1. And we'll accept the rest of these defaults. We could even uh, give it a, a section label here. We'll put in section A. And now, all we simply have to do is grab the parent view, move this over until we like the placement, press return. Now it's asking, where do you want this section to be cut through? We can either utilize a work plane or pick a point. By pressing P for point, we'll grab the lower lug, and that will define the, uh, the point where the section is generated. And we'll uh, be made well aware of exactly what we generated. Here we have a, a, a crosshatch pattern for the section that we generated. ANSI 37. There you go. <laughs> and it actually even labeled the, the cut through rates, exactly. right? Yeah, it sure did. As in, A. In traditional CAD system, it'd take hours and hours right. to do this drawing. And the dimensions we're seeing here basically are free to us uh, since we already put the uh, dimensions in the model to start with. The drawing basically is a freebie and almost automatic as a result of our modeling to begin with with the parameters. Hmm. Pretty slick. Let's go back into our model. All right. I'd like to add a, a few more features here. And the first feature we're going to add is a chamfer. Let's place a chamfer on the lower lug. And notice, once again, you have a very intuitive dialog box. Here we can uh, place a chamfer equal distance, two distances, and our graphics reflect our selection, uh, a distance times an angle. In case this, they don't know, what, what is a chamfer? A chamfer is just a bevel. A bevel generally uh, associated with a, with a rounded part. Okay. It takes care of sharp edges similar to a, to a fillet. All right. Fillet is round. Chamfer is flat. Flat. Correct. All right. We're going to go equal distance and we'll go with the default of half of an inch. And let's place a chamfer on these two edges. Now that we have that, let's generate a few uh, fillets. We're going to place a fillet at these two locations, and we'll place it at 3 eighths of an inch. So we've added our, our two fillets and our two chamfers for the lower lug. Now I'd like to make a substantial change. I'm going to edit this lower lug feature. And if you remember, when I extruded it, I gave it a draft angle of negative 7. Let's make a drastic change. Let's change this negative 7 to a positive 5. I'd also like to change the extrusion depth. We're going to change the uh, 6.5 to an 8. So everything is editable. You betcha. All the features you have are editable, editable either within the, the model or within the, uh, within the drawing. Mm -hmm. Let's do a quick update to make sure our uh, <coughs> model reflects those changes. And notice, designer will go in and recalculate our tangencies for our fillets as well as our, our um, intersections for chamfers. And we've changed a negative 7 draft angle to a positive 5 and recalculated all the, uh, the rounds and the, and the chamfers as well. Obviously, redrawing that in a traditional CAD system would be labor intensive at best. Uh, it would take a long time to redraw that entire entity and then update the drawing as well. Right. With this, it's all automatic, uh, saving hours and hours virtually instantly. What kind of, before we go any further, one question I'm thinking to myself is what kind of people, is this, is this specifically made for mechanical people? mechanical designers or is it for anybody else? I mean, it's just... Well, it's for anybody. Um, it's, it is geared toward the mechanical industry, but as we can see, I'm, I'm actually uh, generating, generating a part that's utilized in the, the piping and processing industry. This is a, a hanger bracket for, for piping. So, uh, really anyone who needs to do 3D design can probably benefit from this. Right. Uh, it's a solid modeling technology is the fastest and easiest way to model in 3D. And, and parametric and feature-based solids are the best way to do solid modeling, so. Right. And, I mean, everyone's going to call and ask this, but I'll ask this question. What is the price in this software? This price, uh, software is only $1,500. It retails for $1,500 as an add-on to an existing AutoCAD. Exactly. And, again, that's versus $20-odd-thousand dollars and up for other feature-based parametric solid modelers that have been out for a little while. So, and another thing that I, I'm just thinking of all these things that I people ask all the time is what like we keep saying this is AutoCAD and it is AutoCAD right. and it saves all the files in AutoCAD right. format DWG. standard DWG format or what are the other formats is there any? yeah we also have the ability to uh, generate what's known as a SAT file and that stands for for spatial ASICS te technology and it will allow you to bring this part in the uh, in the SAT format into an FEA package that uh, utilizes ASUS as their 
their solid kernel as well. So this FEA meaning finite, finite element, element analysis for, uh, for like a NAS for thermal and, and kinetic um, mm -hmm. evaluations and so forth. I just like to because people always we call it all these acronyms. Right. And we like to explain everything. Right. Now we also have the ability to uh, to generate multiple parts within this drawing file. So if you wanted to to create a spindle or a pipe going through this upper lug, we can utilize AutoCAD designer variables and generate a spindle with a, say, five thousandths less diameter than, uh, than this first part. And when we, when we do that, we also have the ability to, when we create a new view, if we create a base view, we can either include all the parts within this drawing file or document the, the active part. So you have a lot of, uh, a lot of flexibility there as well. Right. One thing I want to tell everybody, the phone number is 861-6283, 861-6283. It says that people have been calling in, and we, um, what have we've done is we've answered all the questions people have. So if we just let you keep talking, we won't have any callers because everybody you're, you're answering all the questions. It's great. Okay, I'll continue right. on. Oh, we do have callers already now, so, but 861-6283. Uh, but I, you're explaining it so good, you're answering all the questions, so it's, it's, it's actually great. You're too kind. All right. Do you want to keep going, or do you want to take callers, or you tell me? Or Incidentally, I'd, I'd like to add, we also have IGIS out, as well as DXF out, all the standard things, as well as the, uh, the SAT format. Oh, okay. It's all your standard oh, or DWG, stuff, which or is DWG, standard. right. Sure. So, and I, I know someone asked, asked me this it. question, DWG, you can even bring these into, like, the new AutoCAD LT product. I mean, you actually view That's these right. as, a, as a true 3D object, not meshed or anything, but it's a, you can look at it in the, both the part and the drawing mode. That's true. Uh, for an for end user that does not have designer on their station, they can still utilize these drawing files. They'll bring in uh, the documentation, paper space, as we can see right here, and the, the 3D model will also come in. It, no, it will not have the, uh, the dimensional relationships, but it'll, it'll come in as a, as a 3D wireframe block. So you can utilize these drawings. So right. conceivably, you could finish drafting or detailing this particular view here on a low-cost package like LT. Hmm. All right, but it, but because it is AutoCAD, AutoCAD, it's DWG format. Right, exactly. Standard right. DWG. Okay, what do you want to keep going? There? Let's zoom in here and, and make sure that our, our crosshatch pattern uh, does reflect the current change. We went from a negative seven to a positive five, and we've also added in the uh, the rounds a as well as a fillet. So it does a very good job of uh, of updating all of our views. Let's go back out, and we can show you how we can uh, edit views, move them around a little bit, and we'll. Uh, push this view up a little bit and let's create a new one based on that view. We'll create a view and this will be a, an, an orthogonal view as well and I'm going to generate uh, a full section. We're going to utilize the same crosshatch. We'll bring it in at a scale of, uh, of 2 to 1 and we'll stick with the, the regular defaults. And let's pull it yeah, off. Don't get upset. We're going to have to take a quick break here. Okay. I hate to cut you off. I hate to cut you off. That's just fine. Everyone, 861-6283, we've got callers. We'll take them as soon as we get back. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. The men and women in the National Guard and Reserve face some tough challenges when they serve. Challenges that teach them discipline, leadership, and technical skills that make them better employees. So when they need time off to serve, don't make their toughest challenge. Approaching you. In a life-threatening emergency, you should know what to do. Say a loved one exhibits unusual symptoms. The first thing to do is... Clear! No. First thing to do. Oh, it's a tourniquet. No. The first thing you do is pick up oh, the phone and dial your emergency number. Call 911 first. Right. How about mouth to mouth? I don't think so. Hmm. To learn more about life saving techniques, contact your Red Cross. Excuse me, do you wear your safety belt? Why, no, I don't wear my safety belt. Thank you.
could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. In case you just tuned in, this is the American Computer Enthusiast Show. My name's Steve Reeves, and we have two guests tonight from Autodesk. We have CJ Shirk and Ken Reich, and we're talking about AutoCAD Designer, brand new add-on for AutoCAD Release 12. And we didn't mention this, but it is for the DOS and the Unix Sun, right? Sun version. Right. But then we're showing it right now on the PC on the DOS version of Release 12. Uh, we've got a bunch of callers here. Why don't we go right into the callers? You want to go in there? Sure. Okay, great. Uh, Jay, do you have a question? Hello? Jay? Jay? Are you there? Jay's bashful. Okay. Uh, we'll put him on hold here because I don't know what's going on here. Should we go to the next line? We'll go to the next line. Bob, do you have a question? Um, good evening. Does that have a, uh, a thread extruder? Will it draw a thread on a helix? No, it won't. Um, you, can, you can generate the, the bold hole, but the actual uh, helix generation is not available at this point. Okay, and will that be available in the Windows version? There, there. It, well, there's not going to be a Windows version. Okay, there won't be a. No, we, we're we're waiting for the uh, release for the 32-bit Windows version, and that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you very much. You bet. Now, is that something you do with a list program or something like it? Sure, that could be uh, accessible with uh, with either AutoLisp or or ADS. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people would represent that uh, cosmetically rather than trying to model it in solids because right. most of those threads are standard and everyone knows what they are anyhow. Right. Let's go back to Jay here, see if Jay's here now. Jay, do you have a question? Is anybody on this line? Hello? Okay, well, we give up on this guy. Let's go to Latanya. Do you have a question? Hello? We must have answered them all. Yeah, something's going on here with the phone. Well, apparently she didn't have a question either. We answered it, one or the other. Let's go, uh, wanna try? Well, let's try Jay one more time here. Jay, do you have a question? Is there anybody on this line? See you later, bye. Okay, go ahead. Keep going in your demo there. Okay, we'll continue on. When we left off for break, we were getting ready to uh, place a, a section view of, this, uh, of the plan view, and before we created a section utilizing a point. Well, here we're gonna grab the, uh, the work plane, uh, the, the default, and let's go select this work plane. So essentially, we're gonna generate a cross-section of the model directly down the center of the model when you utilize the, uh, the sketch plane that we, we uh, generated earlier. And we, here we have the, uh, <coughs> the crosshatch pattern that will uh, designate half of our part. Another nice feature is the ability to generate an isometric view based on a crosshatch view. So we'll, uh, again, create another view. This will be an isometric. And let's place this in at a scale of 0.75 to 1. By simply selecting the, uh, the section view and picking out a spot, we're going to, in essence, generate an isometric view of one half of our part. Hmm. As, as we can see when we, when we zoom in here. And notice these are, these are very accurate views. Now how long would it take you to do that? This normally? would take uh, quite, a, quite a while. Wouldn't take me that long. Well, not you. <laughs> Okay, let's that go. is a pretty hard thing to do right there. Yeah. Half oh, yeah. of a sure. isometric. Half of an, yeah. Ha you're generating an isometric view of half of your part. And, uh, and notice how quickly it generated the hidden lines. You aren't, you aren't going out and getting coffee. This is, uh, this is generating it extremely fast. Let's go back into our model. A few more things I'd like to show you. So you're actually switching back and forth, flopping back. Actually, it's almost like two packages, but it's really, it's the same thing. But one is models, be working in a model. Sure. The other is the sheet. Yeah, the, paper the, space. Yeah, the drawing mode. We're, we're actually generating the documentation right. that represents our model. Sorry to interrupt you. That's all right. Let's go back into a single ISO view. And I'd like to show you that we have a number of different options for, for uh, visualization. Here we're going to generate uh, a quick mesh on our part. And this will allow us. This will allow us to to get a, a good full photorealistic image of, of our current status of our model. All right. And once we do this, we have the a number of options. We can use Auto Vision, which comes with a, a material library of 150 materials. We can we can assign these materials to our to our model, and then generate a, a photorealistic image of that model with the materials applied. 
So what are some of the materials like? Steel and things? Steel, um, steel, chrome, copper. We'll go through a list. I'll oh, okay. aluminum. So. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, let's take a quick peek at what we have. Go in here and, and take a look at the materials. Pick out the materials li library, and we can scroll down and, and look at everything that we have available. We have a number of different plastics. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of woods. We have some bumpy brick. So we have a, a broad range of materials. Let's zoom up in here, and we're going to grab some blue, blue metallic. Isn't that a rock band? It used to be. Oh, I'm not sure if they're still playing. Let's attach this. I'm going to attach this to our part. And once we attach it to our part, we can uh, generate a, a rendered image of our model with that material applied. So now we're in auto vision. Correct. We're using which is another uh, add-on to auto. Which is another ADS application. It's an add-on. It's very similar to uh, 3D Studio. It just uh, it doesn't move. It, it right. generates uh, still images. Now, what's the difference between this and what comes with AutoCAD, the render package? Well, AutoCAD R12 comes with AVE Render. Um, one thing that AVE Render does not have is the ability to to attach materials oh. onto the object and, and get a so that is a big difference. Textures yeah, and other things. Hmm. Yeah, as well as uh, placing lights and moving lights around and so forth. And here you can see a, a blue metallic applied to our part. Hopefully that didn't come out uh, Well, you can see it. Dark, it looks, yeah, it looks great on TV. Okay. Kind of like me. It looks great on TV. You might uh, generate an image <laughs> like that for marketing purposes or for engineering presentations of your final work. Right. That's where you'd use that. The regular rendering is, is just a, a smooth shading, but adequate for some visualization purposes. Hmm. That's great. While this is uh, rendering, one thing that I know, well, let's, take, let's go right to the phone call. We've got people that are on the phone now. You bet. Latonia, do you have a question? <coughs> I think there's something wrong with this line one. Hello? Oh, there. Are you there? Yes. Yes, do you have a question? Sure. I was wondering uh, why are we not supporting the Windows uh, version right now uh, for AutoCAD with this software? Well, uh, who wants to answer that? I guess I'll, I'll jump on that one. Uh, the Windows version... Microsoft, Microsoft 3.1 Windows, the way it handles its memory allocation makes it technically very difficult to implement this technology. With the advent of the next release of Windows, it'll be much easier to do so. For current users who have Windows, what we're going to do on a special basis, or actually it's a special we're running right now, is we'll send you the DOS version and allow you to continue to run your Windows version of the software. So you can take advantage of the Windows environment and still take advantage of the power of uh, Autodesk Designer running under DOS. Does that answer your question? Yes. It's mostly just, most like memory and memory Yeah, it's, it's a performance consideration as well. Right. Right. Uh, Windows has a little more overhead to it. So. It would work, but it would be slower than beans. Sure. That's a technical we're gonna, term. We're going to wait for a little true. Under predictable, so. How do you yeah. order this package? Sorry? Uh, pardon me? How are you able to order this uh, software? Through your AutoCAD dealer. Okay, then. All right. Thanks. Okay, we have another call here. Yuri, do you have a question? Uh, yes. Go ahead. My question is uh, that I am very much interested, but uh, because I'm not really uh, uh, responding properly, and I don't have a computer at home, but I, I'm, I like to really do something and learn, it ab learn about it and try to use a program that you do have, and I don't know what to do. I'm just... Uh, how you can help me in this respect. Well, one thing that I'd recommend is two things. One is uh, maybe joining HALPC, the Houston area PC users group, and we have, there is an AutoCAD SIG, special interest group, that you can go and they have meetings once a month, talk about AutoCAD and things like that. The second thing would be to go some, to an authorized AutoCAD training center, like the Houston Community College, and they will be, places a lot of the ATCs will be teaching designer, aren't they? Sure, we expect so. All, the ATCs, that's AutoCAD training center. Um, like the CAD CAM Center here in Houston, Houston Community College, U of H. You can go there and take classes and they have classes on weekends, weeknights, during the week, quarters, whatever. Uh, and I'd suggest that. And there are lots of books on things too. A lot of AutoCAD books at like Bookstop and places like that that you can learn about this. You bet. Isn't that good? Yeah. Good, good answers. No, I'm just kidding. Well said. Okay. Um, we have another caller. Thanks for calling. I'm not sure how you say your name. How do you say your name? Carl? Yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, I was just kind of watching this demonstration. It looks like some really powerful stuff on a PC. Right. But we're currently using AutoSurf, and I'm wondering, can we take our models 
from the designer module into AutoSurf? Yes, you can. We have, uh, once again, under the design menu, utilities, transfer, we have not only the ability to uh, generate a, a SAT file, but here we have the ability to uh, explode, if you will, the ACES-based solid model into a NURBS-based surface model. Once you do that, you have all the functionality with our um, AutoCAD AutoSurf package. You can generate parting lines for, for mold and die making and so forth, and bring it into our, our manufacturing expert, generate a, a tool path necessary to actually make this part. You could actually make a, a real part from what we draw on the screen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you might note, too, on the screen that the next pull-down menu to the right is actually AutoSurf. So we're running concurrently with AutoSurf, Designer, and AutoVision. I appreciate it. Sure. Hey, thanks, thanks for, call. for calling. What are some of the new products? I mean, what we talked about? AutoVision, Designer, what's AutoSurf? AutoSurf. AutoMill. What are some of those? AutoCAD LT. There's a lot of new things. Yeah, a lot now. of new products. All right. We have another phone call here. Well, no, we don't. There's nobody on line three. Apparently, we don't have someone on three. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. Okay. I'd like to show you the, uh, the power of utilizing a, a third-party graphics board. Here we've generated um, a rendered image, and let's rotate this. We can do an actual dynamic rotation over a model. And once again, this can be uh, achieved with the addition of a, of a rather inexpensive graphics card. Here we have the ability to... Uh, rotate this in real time. Pretty neat. Yeah, this can be really important in 3D design because it, it's sometimes you can get lost in wireframe mode with what right. you're actually trying to create. So be, by being able to rotate it and zoom in on areas that you're interested in, you can really, uh, really improve your, your 3D design capabilities and also catch errors that you might make during the design process. Exactly. Right. Now that Again, we don't want to scare people away, but you couldn't do that with a normal VGA card. That is a, an add-on card, but it's something that's available that it'll fit in any regular 46. That's true. That's a good point. Speaking of that, what is the minimum configuration for this? What would you recommend as a minimum configuration for designer? We recommend uh, 16 mega RAM. And this will allow you to, to generate a, a rather complex part with, uh, w with numerous parts within the drawing file. and. Uh, That'll, that'll work just fine for you. The package will run on a 386 class processor. Obviously, the more processor, the better. Uh, we've successfully run this package on a 386DX20. However, it's not really ideal. A 486 platform is best. Essentially, if you can run AutoCAD uh, on your computer, you can run Designer. It just takes a little more time and a little more resource. All right. Do you have any more models you can I show? do. Well, I'd like to finish up with uh, our directors yelling at us to show more fun models. Okay, let me show you real quick some uh, very advanced uh, fillet generations. And here we're going to place a fillet on the back and front face of our tab. And let's go with the default radius of 3 eighths of an inch. Once we do that, we're going to generate a rather complex fillet. This is going to be a rolling ball fillet. And we're going to place it right here. And to make things more difficult, let's give it a dissimilar radius of, of a quarter of an inch. Wait, we got to take a quick break here, all right? Don't get upset. We'll be back just for a few minutes when we come back. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's going on? Shh. Smokey's coming. What are you guys up to? <laughs> oh. Be careful with matches and campfires. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Sorry, force of habit. Bummer. Ah, uh, that's my nephew Scruff reading that comic book. Improving my mind. Give me your magic zapper and I'll improve your mind. Hey, that's me! Look inside. It's about the adventures you have coming home from school. Uh-oh. It gives tips on what to do about bullies, finding drugs, or trouble on the bus. And it shows what happens to Scruff. What happens? What happens? You'll see for your free copy, write McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652, and help me take a bite out of crime. What happens? What happens? Hi, everyone. We ran out of time. Uh, this is American Computer Enthusiast Show. I want to thank both my guests, CJ Shirk and Ken Reich. Say, so we'll see you next week. Thanks for coming. Sorry we ran out of time. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.